Topic here is evolution of music from spirituals to hip hop. By the end of this class, you should be able to define these terms here. You want to use the AP source framework to write your summary and determine the significance of the source that is required. We're going to first start out with this timeline, this timeline which represents the United States and all of the issues going on in the 1950s, primarily up into the 1970s. In the 1950s, we see rock and roll starting to emerge. This genre of music was definitely considered controversial. It was nicknamed the devil's music because of its sexually suggestive lyrics as well as its dance style. In the 1960s, you start to see the Motown sound develop as well as some um, individuals who may or may not be pioneers and considered the forefathers of hip hop, James Brown, the last poets. And then you get into the 1970s, which is really where hip hop starts to emerge. And then some of the long term consequences that lead to hip hop being mainstream. One in particular is the show Yo MTV Raps. I'm going to first start out with some of uh, the doo wop sound, the doo wop sound with the barbershop quartet, usually having three to four singers, uh, a lead singer with three background singers. If you clip the uh, links here, it'll take you to these songs here in the still of the night. Book of Love, two good examples of the doo-wop sound. In the 1950s, 1960s, we have a series of dances, Elvis the Pelvis. And the reason why Elvis becomes a crucial figure here is because some would argue that Elvis stole his sound as well as his dance move from African-Americans. Um, so when you look at these particular dance styles, you want to keep that in mind, uh, you know, just a series of dance moves going along with the music of the 50s and 60s. As far as the AP framework, these terms that are in yellow highlights represent terms that you want to be familiar with. And as it says here, African-Americans have drawn from African-based musicals and performative elements for their sound. I give you some of the examples here, call and response, which we've already talked about, storytelling, the dozens, which is a series of back and forth exchanges between two individuals. And then of course, the sounds of music that we've already focused on, the spirituals during slavery, which was rooted in Christianity and a uh, belief that things were going to change jazz, gospel, rhythm and blues or R&B. We also see some individuals emerging, Sister Rosetta Tharp, Bo Dilley and Little Richard. We'll be listening to some of their sounds in a minute. As we transition to the evolution of hip hop, we see once again African American music reflecting the lived experiences. We address this during slavery as well as the civil rights movement. As far as hip hop is concerned, that's going to originate in the South Bronx in the 1970s when Cool Herc is going to throw the first hip hop party at 1520 Cedric Ave. We also need to understand that there are five elements of hip hop. You have the DJ, you have the MC, graffiti, break dancing, and the fifth element would be knowledge of the culture. The AP framework mentions the work of John Michel Basquiat, who was a graffiti artist, one of the five elements of hip hop. And it's actually pretty sad, as it says here, that uh, they're trying to bring a claim to artists. You know, it's questionable whether or not this is art in the 1970s, but for the most part, artists are going to wind up uh, trying to make a name for themselves. Uh, keep in mind that this is also at the point of the Black Power movement. And so you're going to see the Black Panther Party with some of those programs influencing numerous rap artists, some like Tupac and Chuck D. Ruth Brown is in the AP framework. Consider the individual who had started R&B music with some of her hit songs, as mentioned here. We'll click this link so we could hear what that sounds like. This is another image that's in the AP framework. It's tracing the origins of music within the African-American community. It first starts off with the African music roots, and we did look at this in unit one. And you can trace some of the elements as it gets down to the lower sections here, where it brings up disco, rap, and hip hop. And this is all taking place in the 1970s, fusing all of the different genres of music even making a connection to things like techno, house music, and other forms of music. We're going to transition to the historiography of the evolution of hip hop. 
And the first thing you need to focus on is the policy of benign neglect, which was the policy of the Nixon administration. As it says here, the time may have come when the issue of race could benefit from a period of benign neglect. And what that means is that the government is not going to intervene. When we looked at the 1960s, we looked at the civil rights movement, we looked at the civil rights legislation and all of the problems that impacted the Johnson administration, which eventually led to Johnson not accepting the Democratic Party's nomination. As a result of that, when Nixon replaces Johnson, his advisors are going to suggest just kind of let the race problem resolve itself on its own, which means federal government intervention is going to be very limited, if not non-existent. And the end result is going to be severe poverty, and the South Bronx is going to become a national case study of urban decay. Another contributing factor to South Bronx poverty would be the development of the Cross Bronx Expressway, which would further divide the uh, section and then lead to white flight. The cutting of programs, the cutting of department funding, benign neglect, and then you have this white flight that emerges, which pretty much leaves Latino and African Americans in the South Bronx experiencing poverty. And without any sort of federal government intervention, that situation is going to get progressively worse. Here we see some images of the South Bronx in the 1970s. For more information, watch the documentary Decades of Fire, a PBS section. Benign neglect definitely looks like an urban war zone, though it's so bad that Jimmy Carter would visit the area as he makes campaign promises for his presidency. Landlords eventually figured out that it was too difficult to collect rent from poor people, and it was better off for landlords to financially burn down their properties and collect from insurance companies, which led to further urban decay. Eventually, gangs would rise and they would control the streets. And the South Bronx would become that example of urban decay. In the documentary Flying Cut Sleeves, they talk about what becomes known as the Ho Av Truce. And the Ho Av Truce was a result of a gang member, Black Benji, who was killed. And the significance of this particular meeting was that all of the gangs agree to a truce which would allow people from this neighborhood to travel to this neighborhood for pretty much the first time and vice versa. As we transition to the Holy Trinity or the fathers of rap, we see Cool Herc who would throw the first hip hop party at 1520 Sedgwick Ave, Africa Bambata. Africa Bambata was the leader of one of the biggest gangs called the Black Spades who would maintain that particular truce and then we have Flash who would develop different styles of mixing, primarily what becomes known as the merry-go-round. This section is titled Who Was Doing What? as we look at some of the key figures within this hip-hop cultural movement. The first, as mentioned before, is going to be Cool Herc, who would throw the first hip-hop party at 1520 Sedgwick Ave. Here is the flyer for that particular party. And what he was known to do was to take two records, locate the break, which is where the drum solo is located, and then he would pretty much take that break, which would be 10 seconds, maybe 18 seconds, and then he would, when this record would end that break, he would then transition to this, and his goal here was to extend the break, so all you're listening to is just that drum section of whatever record. This eventually would lead to the evolution of breakdancing as a dance style. So the DJ is extending the break. The break dancers are dancing to that break. And the MC is the individual who is pumping up the crowd. He's pretty much working for the DJ. And that would eventually evolve to rap music or the rapper. So it's interesting to point out that initially the MC or the rapper was not at the center stage of hip hop. It was primarily the DJ in comparison to today where the rapper seems to be at the uh, forefront center of hip hop. As mentioned before, Africa Bombada, the leader of the biggest gang in New York was able to maintain that truce. Here we have uh, a song from 1968, The Last Poets, which would I guess it's a good example of 
cultural consciousness, the Ghetto Brothers. This is the gang that Black Benji was a member of, and eventually Black Benji was killed. The song, The Incredible Bongo Band, which probably has the best uh, break to be extended for break dancers, and is considered one of the most sampled songs in hip hop. Graffiti, the debate about where graffiti has its origins. Apparently it can be traced back to identifying neighborhoods between black and white in Philadelphia. As it says here, it might also be linked to cornbread. Um, you'll also look at graffiti as a style of art. The movie Star Wars is a documentary primarily looking at graffiti artists. Two important graffiti artists would be Fab Five Freddy and Lee Quinones. Fab Five Freddy and Lee Quinones would star in the movie Wild Style, which is considered the first hip hop film. And what's significant about Fab Five Freddy is that he formed an alliance with the punk movement uh, with a group called Blondie that would eventually put rap in uh, one of their songs. So we see three movements that are taking place in New York City, the punk movement, homosexuals after Stonewall and hip hop coming out of the South Bronx. Homosexuals are important because we're looking at disco and disco is a genre of music that is considered gay tribal music and DJs are uh, controlling that particular style of music. So for the most part, if you want to get any of your music played, you definitely need to come to grips in terms with disco music as well as the um, gay political agenda that's taking place in the 1970s and so what fab five freddy is ultimately going to be able to do is form that particular alliance to start getting djs who are known at this point to control the genre of disco to start playing some of those hip-hop records which is why you're going to see some link between the three different styles as mentioned before fab five freddy who is actually right here in the video rapture by blondie and at the end of Blondie's song, Rapture, she has this verse here, which pretty much outlines, um, you know, the, the historiography here. Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's fly. That's a reference, as I said before, to Fab Five Freddy. Fab Five Freddy would later be contracted by MTV to host the show Yo! MTV Raps before leaving and giving up his... Uh, his uh his show to ed lover and dr dre dr dre ed lover the mc and the rapper there's a debate here about what are the origins according to mona lisa saloy she's trying to make a connection to the uh dozens in slavery as we talked about during slavery that you could buy slaves by the dozen so you possibly didn't want to be the dozens you uh, field slave and then you could have the house slave. The house slave has the better living standard. And so everybody's making fun of the dozens. And uh, that back and forth banter, according to her book, has its origins in hip hop. Breakdancing, as mentioned before, would eventually evolve. In this particular image, you have somebody doing a freeze. This is a required image from the AP framework. What we're going to do here now is listen to some songs and you want to complete these tasks as you listen to the songs, analyze the lyrics and think about the themes. Now we're going to be looking at the songs here, listening and reading the lyrics. I've already mentioned Blondie and I've given you the significance of each particular song. For example, these two right here is an example of um, a huge beef between a rapper from the South Bronx, KRS-One, and MC Shan from Queens. Uh, you can listen to the, both of those songs, which is about the origins of hip hop. Here we have another significant song. This one is more closer to what eventually will become house music, but it's actually rooted in a pretty sad story when the Philadelphia Department uh, Police Department bombed an organization called Move. Toddy T in Los Angeles would be writing his songs and his music about what the LAPD was doing to control crack rock. And then Run DMC's song Walk This Way would gain more national 
listeners, primarily white listeners, as rap would become the target of congressional uh, concern, the song Self-Destruction would emerge, public enemies fight the power, and then you start to see some fusing of house music with the song Follow Me, um, which originated in Chicago. Some black consciousness songs, Stetsasonics Africa, x Clans, Exodus, female rappers, and then of course the connection to Los Angeles with police brutality as outlined in NWA's song Straight Outta Compton. And you have a, another fusing of hip hop and house music with the Jungle Brothers' Girl I'll House You. So at the end of this particular session, you want to be able to define these terms here. And if you still need help, here's the definition.